The third one um, that I ask us to consider is something that I think is incredibly uh, hard to, for me to grapple my head around. And that's the idea that, you know, the panel title of stolen labor on stolen land, but I think it goes beyond that because as we've seen, stolen labor is not just on stolen land, stolen labor is often complicit in the stealing of indigenous lands. And we see that from, you know, from the railways, since the railways, and we honor the legacy of the Chinese rail workers, one worker for every four miles who died on the track for every Chinese worker who was paid one dollar a day, for white workers who were paid over five dollars a day, yet those tracks are the brunt of colonization. Those tracks that go through so many indigenous territories are responsible for the dispossession of indigenous lands. And certainly what I'm not saying here is that labor is not responsible for colonization. We know that. And certainly migrant workers who are imported to work in specific industries like construction, like the tar sands, like the Olympics, are not the ones who are primarily responsible for the occupation and dispossession of indigenous lands. But I do think as a migrant justice movement at large, we have to grapple with the question of what labor looks like on Turtle Island. What industries are people being forced to labor in, particularly as an increasing amount of industries on Turtle Island are resource extractive? What is our responsibility, not just to this land because it's stolen land, but what is our responsibility to the land because as human beings, we have a responsibility to live sustainably on this earth. We have a responsibility to make sure in as much as we can that our movements are ones that hold the sustainability of this earth as central to our work and not as secondary to our work. Um, so in terms of some of those, those questions, um, again, I, I don't offer any answers, but I think they're things that we, we have to struggle with because I think some of our presumed alliances are incredibly strong and have been growing and have been strengthening, but there's questions that we have to grapple with as time goes on because these are in our face particularly in BC, as Brother Chris had mentioned, there's an increasing number of migrant workers in the Olympics construction industry. There's an increasing number of migrant workers working in the tar sands. Um, and again, these workers are hugely exploited. Workers are dying in the tar sands and we don't even know what their names are because they are so invisible. Unions don't even know what their names are because their lives and their labors are deemed so worthless. Um, and at the same time, while there resides so much possibility for alliances in such movements between migrants, migrant workers, non-status folks, indigenous folks, and folks of color, I think we do have to deal with some of these questions because at the root of it rests this question of labor. And what kind of labor are we valuing? How do we re-envision what labor looks like in our lives? And how do we reconstruct uh, what a labor movement looks like and, and some of those questions Chris addressed as well. And in terms of our connection as laborers to the earth. So in terms of um, some examples of that, in BC, the anti-Olympics movement, as people know, its primary slogan is no Olympics on stolen native land. And within that, the movement has really been able to bring in a wide variety of folks struggling in other communities, particularly the strongest alliances that have been built have been built between indigenous communities struggling on the land and folks of color who organized with groups like No One Is Illegal and also with folks struggling in the downtown east side as poor communities who are all fighting displacement, who are all exploited and who are all victims of this colonial industry, this capitalist industry that is the Olympics. And the Olympics Resistance Network in Vancouver in particular has some of its some of its core principles is rooted in this idea that while there are so many struggles that are important to us and while we come from so many diverse struggles and we don't like to think about a hierarchy of struggles but we really have to understand indigenous sovereignty as foundational and we have to understand that indigenous self-determination and issues of indigenous land are something that we all have to root our struggles within for any of our struggles to be meaningful. And that's something that the Olympics Resistance Network and other organizations as well 
have really tried to put forward in a way that is about building solidarities, but being able to reconfigure what solidarities look like. So we're not calling for simple unity across all our differences. We're not calling for a simple convergence of various sectors. We're calling for unity that's predicated on the recognition that this is stolen land and all our work is done accordingly. And within that, we all come from different analysis. We all are either in the anti-capitalist work, we're doing anti-colonial work, anti-racist work, migrant justice work, anti-poverty work, housing, policing, security, all of that has to be rooted within that foundation. And so I think that offers um, one potential model for us to ground ourselves in when we talk about solidarity with indigenous communities. Because for me, it's not about simply mutual aid. It's not about mutual aid between people of color and migrant communities and indigenous communities. It's about immigrant communities' responsibility to struggle on stolen land for decolonization and for the freedom of Turtle Island. In terms of... In terms of moving forward, and uh, just to conclude, for those who kind of know me, I'm an eternal, rabid optimist. Um, and so I know that upsets a lot of people, particularly in Toronto. Um, <laughs> but I, I do carry that very dear to me. And you know, every, for every life that we see deteriorating, for the, the collective reality that our lives are deteriorating and that our people are being oppressed, increasingly oppressed every day, an increasing amount of detentions, an increasing amount of deportations, an increasing amount of people being subjugated by the police, an increasing amount of resources being taken, physically removed from indigenous territory. I think it's incredible that our fighting spirit is not only remaining, it is growing. And I see that in Toronto. Toronto is amazing in terms of the resistance that has grown in the city over the past decade. The amount of people who are involved, the amount of people who are making links, the amount of people who are connecting all of their struggles. And I think if we listen and look carefully for every broken body that we see, for every person that we see who's been subjugated, there's another life, there's another person who rises up to resist. Harriet Nahaney in BC, who Elena mentioned, has inspired so many young warriors to resist to fight the Olympics and to realize, and we all have that in our community, to realize that there's nothing more beautiful than us being able to affirm life, to affirm land, to affirm the fact that every single person is of value, that we all carry dignity, to be able to lend courage to each other in these struggles, in moments of darkness, to be able to carry light with each other, and to be able to say that we all carry each other in our hearts and that for all of us, all of our lives are sacred. Um, and for every single time that we see these kinds of things happen, for me, every single time when someone faces deportation and sanctuary is offered within an indigenous community, for every single time that at a land reclamation, people of color are gathered to offer their support to struggles for this land, for every single time that solidarity is echoed from Turtle Island to Palestine, I believe vehemently believe that we really can break down these borders and we can really fight to, to fight all of the oppressive forces that bind us together in some ways, that all of our collective humanity can in fact be affirmed and that colonization one day can be defeated.